let's talk about advice <clears throat> and giving men advice. Um, I've noticed this trend of late. Uh, when it comes to giving men just simple, low-level advice, it seems to be a lot of pushback against that. I use example Boyce Watkins Facebook page. Um, first of all, if you build a platform largely off of the support of women, or if you got a lot of the Black Woman's God rhetoric on your page, you pretty much can't do anything really directed towards your brothers. Like you just can't. I was excited, a bit elated when I saw that Boyce was about to do the whole Black Men United thing because I'm like the context of what you came from. I'm like, hell yeah. I would support that. I'd sign up. I'd pay for that. You know, you got all these people on YouTube crying and complaining about black men being in MGTOW, being in, in my radar and all that stuff. And I'm like, well, you're denying the allegations without addressing the evidence. Why are they over there? Because black community does not talk about those specific issues that directly affect men in general, black men in particular. And as long as that doesn't happen, they're going to be over there. Like, you just, it is what it is. But shortly after, you know, he got Andre Hatchett as the vice president and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, cool dude. But they, him and boys, they a little bit too, too the pro black, the black woman this guy for my taste. And then I saw a status one day. It was like ten things a black man could do for the black woman. I'm like, wait a minute. This whole thing started around the Nate Parker situation where Boyce was kind of fed up, hot. He did like at least four or five videos on the topic. How a brother can get acquitted, and we still trying to try him in a public court of opinion in twenty like twenty years later. But I don't know what happened with that. Um, it does seem like it didn't pop off, or it quickly got you know catered towards what black men can do for black women. But um, that's pretty much it though. Like he had a post on his Facebook page, and it was like it said, "No grown ass man should be bumming off another person to pay for his bills. This should ha leave you embarrassed, right?" Got 240-something responses and like uh, hearts and likes and tears or whatever. 33 shares, 33 comments. And of course, you got that chick who's just like anti-patriarchy, anti-capitalist, anti-traditional roles. So she's just going to be consistently disagree with everything Boyce has. And then you had a sister who was actually like taking into consideration some of the issues and reasons why a brother might be down on his luck, child support, other things. But for the most part, nobody disagreed with that post. Even men are hop on the post like, yeah, man up, get your shit together, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be depending on other people. That's standard, right? But he posted another post, like, not shortly after that, a couple posts away about men um, not letting a woman get the free ride. Don't, or fellas, don't date a woman who wants all the rewards and none of the sacrifices. You're not a welfare office, Right? That post corner, 85 responses, 26 comments, 77 shares. But if you look at the comments, you'll see the hit dogs hollering like always. You'll get all the exceptions to the rule to where the conversation, which was supposed to be advice to men who clearly got their shit together, right? Because that's the first thing women want to do is bring up their personal situation and say, oh, I'm 50 and I can't find a man on my level. That's why I'm not dating. Like, this ain't about you. Right, but usually they're the ones that call when he does the Instagram live, and they're the ones. The conversation again, it was directed at men who got their shit together and teach them to watch out. My personal beef opinion, because I did the video where I talked about all these dudes that be pro blackity black but don't have a black wife need to chill. Do that first before you start critiquing other black men about who they dating and whatnot. But I, I, and Boyce was in there, Umar was in there, but I will say, I think one of the reasons why Boyce is single is because he wants to protect his money. I strongly believe that he wants to protect his assets. And, you know, you've heard him talk about, you know, paying child support for his daughter. And he was a professor at Syracuse. So, you know, he was dropping some, some, some M's in child support over the years. For 18, oh, in 18 years, he had to drop an M. But I honestly think that's one of the reasons, but that's a different topic. But I remember when him and the lady wrote, the lady who teaches white school, they hooked up. And it was strategic on Boyce's part because I knew his his ideas and ideology and open-mindedness wasn't going to mesh with hers. But it was like, and Boyce even talks about this. He talks about how 
There were times when he was getting attacked by like Fort Harriet and a bunch of feminists. And what he did was at that time he shouted out Roe. And then like once he did that, a lot of her followers came over there and they kinda of played buffer to all the black feminists that were on his page, just, you know, running all his statuses and stuff. That was strategic on Boys' part, but I knew that their relationship was gonna to come to an end or not come to an end, but I knew she's gonna get fed up with boys because in wife school and the traditionalism and all that stuff, there's things that boys doesn't subscribe to. Right? And boys is open minded like that so he can, you know, say promote her and say if I got married, I would want to go to wife school or I would want to go to husband school, whatever. I would want to learn, blah, blah, blah. But this, their little spat was one day, I think, she asked a question about how, how, how many times do you think your daughter should be used for sex or whatever. And the liberal, you see the relationship boys have with his daughter. I think it's a bit much. I, that To me, just cussing and stuff like that in front of your parents like that, it's just disrespectful to me. I, I couldn't even talk to a chick like that. But that's the relationship they have. They just open like that. And I remember um, he asked that she she asked that question about you know what do you think should happen and how many men and he's like oh, she can do what she want to do and she's like get out of here boy she don't even want to be married and she started crying him saying like oh you just for the individual wealth and this and that but it was funny how their little honeymoon kind of separated over the situation of sex and relationships and stuff like that. And then, like, he a couple of months ago, I think he posted something about being used or women not um, bringing something to the table. And a lot of the women who follow him because of Roe, they were all puzzled. They didn't say nothing on his post, but they were creating whole other posts complaining about it. Whatever. That's a different conversation, though. But I just noticed that whenever men give men positive advice or just look out, bro, right? There's this one comedian dude that sits in his car all the time. Complaining about uh, food that people make and stuff. I guess all his videos are. He got a big, huge platform. He even does a thing with the other comedians and they just go through and they make fun stuff or pick their favorite cartoon character and all this other stuff. And he had some brother wrote a status that I forget what it was specifically, but it was like just basically dudes telling other dudes, like, yo, you don't want these chicks that's for everybody. He said something along the lines of, um, Get you a girl that's hardwired. Don't get a girl that's on the Wi-Fi because Wi-Fi is for everybody. Now, granted, if you're going to pick apart a tweet that was directed at men, yeah, you can analyze and say that doesn't make any sense. Wi-Fi is locked. And I'm like, well, yeah. it's it, it, Back in the day, Wi-Fi used to be not locked and people would get on other people's Wi-Fi and all that stuff. But it's for the most part a lot. So simply him saying free Wi-Fi would have saved this whole conversation. It would have been funny. It would have been whatever. But another black man saw that this guy was giving advice to other men on not chasing thoughts and women who out there getting ran through by everybody. And he had to put his cape on along with other black men on the post because they went through the tweet. They made fun of his clothes. They made fun of the way he looked. They came at, they made personal attacks about where he's at financially all for one picture. And I'm just like, wow, like this one dude gave advice, not even to women, but when your platform is largely defended, dependent upon black women and, you know, he's another one of these pro-black, she's a black, black woman's God type of cats. So you just have that knee-jerk reaction to just put your cape on and, ha, ah, he said something that, you know, motivates men or uplifts men or some advice to men. I got to go attack him. And this dude has a pretty large platform, and the, that post was pretty popping, and they were all just going in on this dude. Because he simply said, like, yo, get you a chick that's hardwired. Don't get you a chick that's on the Wi-Fi. Cause that shit, now, if he would have said McDonald's Wi-Fi or something else, because that shit is it's, it's, it's terrible, it's, you know, it's tacky, it's, you know what I mean, it's unsecure, all that, it probably would have been funnier. But no, the whole point is, this wasn't to women, yet all the women hopped on that comedian's post to, to go in on him. You had your feminists on, oh, this is sexist and misogyny. It's policing women's body. No, the fuck it didn't. He's telling men who agree with him, like, yo, leave those chicks alone. Get you something like this that's more secure. I got that out of it, apparently, but you're not allowed to do that. I'll, I'll give you one more example. I remember uh, this chick, she's actually in Atlanta. She wrote the book, No More Girlfriends. Find that chick. 
She actually has a movie or a TV show coming out off her book. But I guess she was talking about how one of her friend, her male friends was like, yo, um, one advice that I've always given my other, my guys and that I've always been given is don't give with a chick that has issues with her father, doesn't have a good relationship with her father. And that's just like, we know damn well there's a lot of dudes in, in the hood that like damaged women and all that stuff, right? So it's like weird how we know that there are men who are willing to deal with women who are broken and don't have good relationships with father, but the fact that we voice it publicly, bro, right? That's the one piece of advice that we all get unanimously, right? We don't get taught nothing else. We got to figure everything else on our own when it comes to dealing with women. That's the one advice. Like, yo, you might want, even our mothers would tell us that. Like, yo, leave that girl alone. She got daddy issues, whatever. Now, we don't get it twisted. We know that the girls who got been called princess by their daddy and all that stuff, that's a whole set of other issues, because they be believing that shit. But it's better than the latter, right? I'd rather deal with a chick that loves her dad and he's been there for her or he spoiled her than a chick that didn't have that. But that's just a simple advice and you cannot believe the amount of women hops on that post with the hit dog hollering. They was just hurt. The, the, the fact that a man would have the audacity to say, I got standards and I want a chick that has a good relationship with her father, right? The simple basic narrative is how can a woman respect you and submit to you, right? When she can't do that to her own father who we have her life because he's flawed. When you two are also flawed and you will also make mistakes, he gave her life. You just giving her never mind. But see what I'm saying? Like if she can't get that right with that, you know what I mean? That's the foundation that's going to be hard to build off of. Simple, pure advice. Not attacking or bashing black women or any, any type of woman, period. But that type of conversation that men would have publicly is enough to get women to get in their feelings. And I just noticed that if you have any type of platform, again, that is catered to or surrounded by sisters, you cannot talk directly to black men in a positive light or giving them advice because they're going to swallow the post every time. The conversation, the movement, that happens. Even we saw what happened with shitty ass Obama's um, My Brother's Keeper wasn't a policy, it was charity, but you saw what happened with that. That wasn't even something real. And the messed up part was it was a thousand black men that first wrote the letter, right? Because again, it's not just women that's the problem here, it's other men who are also the problem. Just like that comedian dude, right? They wrote the letter first, talking about, no, we demand that girls get help too. Even though there's already a council for women and girls, we're going to sacrifice a little shit that these younger boys that don't have the opportunities we got, we're Morehouse graduates. We already made it. We about to go into the workforce, but we bought the cock block of policy, not a policy, charity, my bad, that was meant for black and Latino boys just so girls can get a piece of it. <clears throat> That's what we do. <clears throat> That's just where... I just noticed that a lot lately. Whenever there's a dude, like you got all these Derrick Jackson type cats and Steve Harvey's and all that giving advice to women and this and that. But then little man just be honest and say something. Hey, my guys, yo, look at this. Watch out for that. And every time Boyce does it, his conversation gets completely usurped. The post becomes about women. All these women start talking about, I'm 50 and I'm, I can't find a man on my level. So what does this have to do with anything? I'm like, and again, the one, I, I, I do believe that the reason why Boyce is not married partly is because, I don't know if I said this in the video or not, it's probably because I think he wants to protect his assets. Because he does a lot of posts about men being with women who want to be leeches and not want to help. He does a lot of posts about that. I do believe that's one of the reasons why he's not married again. I don't think he could fathom uh, losing half of what he built over a relationship. And he does give that advice to men, but it doesn't even get to la it doesn't last long. The the posts get overrun by women, feminists, not only feminists but the traditional chicks don't like what he says when he says that either. And then the butt hurt moist dudes come in and they cape on it too. That's my video. I just noticed that a lot lately. Men can't give men positive advice without women hopping on the post and making it about something different. It's weird. Men should be able to give men advice without women, you know, interacting or interfering. And all these dudes with the capes, they need to just get the fuck out of here. That's just annoying. 
How do you, you make a whole post about a dude clowning him because he's telling other men, yo, bro, look out for this. 